my name's Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Right. That's not all. I'm going to give an introduction because there's a few little bits that I need to just let you know. First of all, you may have noticed, you may not have noticed, there are no longer any adverts on this podcast. And the reason for that is because uh, of complaints, but you know, looking into it, the adverts were much louder than the audio. But it wasn't just that, it was um, people that listen, for example, on Spotify or any other podcast host would perhaps listen to the end and then listen to the next episode, the next recording. And then it'd be adverts at the beginning of that one, which would jolt them out of sleep or jolt them out, out of their uh, boredomness. So I don't want that. I, you know, I, it kind of defeats the object. I'm here to help, not to hinder, you know. So I got rid of the adverts. The second thing is there's been a few issues with Spotify. I've had uh, some messages on Facebook about it. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again because not everybody would have perhaps listened to you know yesterday's episode or the day before. So basically what's happened is the old podcasts that I had which Spotify took and downloaded the episodes um, are no longer there. So I've got new podcasts with all those episodes plus more. So if you maybe have been listening to uh, a Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast on Spotify, which goes up to 77 recordings when actually there's now 274 now this will be 274 so there's a lot more uh, as well as with the relaxation for stress and anxiety podcast that went up to 34 podcast episodes when in fact there's now 66 and that's now got off as well So, um, what I've done, all these podcasts are still on Spotify, the updated ones, it's just the old ones, um, if people are used to going to that link, they'll end up with nothing, it's now, apparently they're, they're blank. So what I've done, on my website jasonnewland.com there's a page called my podcasts you click on that and there's links to every podcast uh, the top six podcasts that I do so the sleep hypnosis deeply no we, we uh, sleep hypnosis weekly the <laughs> Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, that's it. Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety, Panic Attacks. Let Me Bore You to Sleep, this one. Um, hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply and Sleep Insomnia Hypnosis. So those six podcasts that are all homed, they all live on Spreaker. But as well as being on Spreaker, they're also on my website as well. So everything I do is added to the website. So you can download it for free or you can stream it for free. And what I've done on the My Podcast 
my podcasts page you can basically go there and there's a list of podcasts like Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox there's a list of those you can go on there and then choose which you know podcast you want like Let Me Bore You To Sleep or Deep Sleep Whisper or if you go further down the page there's just the each podcast Let Me Bore You To Sleep Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis with the podcast names next to them like Apple Spotify so you can just click on Spotify and that will take you to the page or if you click on Spotify at the top and then click on let me bore you to sleep that'll take you to the page so it's all it's kind of done so you can get to it two different ways as well as that as well as that I realised that you know I'm trying to I want things to be easy I don't want things to be complicated and because I don't really I don't deal with complicated very well myself. Don't you know that's why I have slip on shoes. Keep those laces away from me. And buckles, what the heck? Buckles? No. I don't mind a little bit of sticky stuff, you know, the thing that sticks. But slip ons, that's that's where I'm at in my life. And what I've started doing and it's going to take me a while because of how many recordings I've got it's quite a laborious task I started for each episode that I post on my website so you can download it for free you can stream it and there's a embedded streamed recording from Spreaker so you can just click play and play it on there and you can do all this on your phone or tablet or laptop or whatever and so what I've done is for each recording underneath the player which you can play and stream it I've also listed the podcast hosts where it's at so Apple so listen to this episode on Apple listen to it on Spotify and as well as you can click on the, just the Spotify or the Apple you know link I've also included the whole link so if you wanted to you could copy and paste it into a browser but it's trying to kind of cover all angles you know but this is a very it's not difficult to do for me but it just takes forever it's really it's really boring it's it's really really boring and while I'm doing it all I want to do is just go to sleep I just want to go and lay down because it's sending me to sleep because it's, it's really unstimulating I want it to be done but I've only got six podcasts on the website at the moment. That's six different, you know, um, the, the top six. I'm intending to put all of them on there. But I want to get these ones sorted first. So I hope that makes sense. I put a link to the My Podcasts page on Facebook. I posted that yesterday and I've started trying to um, post with the recording that I put on Facebook when I do a new one also post the links of where you know podcasts the direct link to where it is online for example Spotify and stuff the problem with that is To be fair, I don't need to do the individual links, do I? Yeah, I 
I don't need to do the individual links. Maybe just do a link to the podcast. I don't know, just... It's me, and it? I just like to... I like to make things complicated, even though I don't want them to be complicated. Sabotage, that's what it is. Self-sabotaging. Ooh. So let's have a quick drink. It's... I don't know what time it is. It's not one o'clock yet, I don't think. It's 12.40, I think. See, now... I've got the windows open. It's quiet. And all day long it's been windy. Proper windy. Like window rattling windy. And now, nothing. Which is, really is boring. That was a boring sentence. Hmm, that was boring. So I went out today, or yesterday. I had five pound. Um that I lent someone and they gave it back to me on Friday so uh, 73 pence or whatever in the bank and a five pound note that's been on my table and I needed to get some milk on Monday or Sunday night but I just I may do with toast for two days breakfast instead of uh, my normal porridge and then today I thought, mm, what I'll do is I'll have a bath and I'll go out. And I'll try and get, hopefully get get what I need with that five pound. And that was my goal. But before I got here, before I left, my headphones arrived my beautiful headphones oh they're lovely and they're noise cancelling I mean even without any music being played with the headphones on it reduces the sound around which is beautiful so I was uh, at one point I was standing at a bus stop and I uh, I thought I'd turn the volume down I'd, I'd turn the, the music off and had my headphones on just to see if anyone was talking about me <laughs> which they weren't but it was really nice to hear the sound the traffic going past I could still hear it but it was just much quieter. Really nice. So I found it. Um, I found it improved my experience of travelling on the bus and going into the supermarket and buying the bits that I needed just to have a bit of music playing and just and it, because it's noise cancelling I don't have to have it up very loud in order for me to hear the music if that makes sense so I don't need to have it on full blast because I can hear the music because I don't generally have loud music I do sometimes I did earlier I mean I, you know sometimes if you're going to play uh, Pipes of Peace by Paul McCartney you've got to have it blasting out and, you know, it's, I mean it's, it's a ravey song isn't it it's one you want to dance to 
so I as I was waiting for the bus again the bus was about 20 minutes late so I'm not really sure what's going on with them buses at the moment I mean, luckily I didn't have any appointments or anything so it didn't matter you know very much about you know what time you got there but when I went to get on there was all these people standing at the front of the bus and I've, first of all I thought people were just getting off and not not getting each other or you know not I mean getting off the bus uh, it wasn't a, the love bow the love bus and I and I thought oh but they weren't they were just standing there because the bus was so busy so I get on and I like well, there was nowhere to there was nowhere to sit so I just had to stand basically just near where the driver was Eventually, I realised if the bus stopped really quickly, I'm gonna, you know, I got my back to the. I, I've, I don't know, I'm just in quite a vulnerable situation there, so I moved up a little bit so I could have something to grab hold of. And she said, "Can you get off me, please?" I said, "Sorry, I thought you were, I thought you were a post." I didn't. That, that, that never happened. A post. A bar, you know, one of those um, things you grab hold of when you're on a bus. I did talk to a lady, she was nice. I don't normally talk to people on a bus, but she was, she was friendly. And then this, see, I don't like to say the word elderly anymore because she's probably not that much older than me. You know, she's probably maybe only like 15. She might have only been like 10, 12 years older than me. But she's, you know, she was seemed elderly. And she had a, like a trolley thing. And I, I know just from experience that a lot of people, like my nan did, they take trolleys with them. Because when they've got a trolley, they don't need a walking stick. They use the trolley kind of as a, to go shopping, but as well as a, a way of uh, supporting them and getting around. So because I'm kind of aware of that, I don't know how many, if other people are, if so, so I guess there's a lot of people that haven't had much experience of uh, old fogies, so like I, <laughs> I elderly people. So what I did is I got off the bus and uh, I, I helped her, well I didn't help her on, I just let her, let her struggle, but I let her get on first, get, let her get on so I, that she could sort of get on the bus, <laughs> I didn't, didn't let her struggle, what am I saying stuff like that for, I didn't, um, and I was thinking where is she going to sit, and she moves up. And nobody gave their seat. Mark, I didn't have a seat to give. Um, and it was all these young people sitting at the, on the front, on the seats that you're supposed to give up to elderly um, people, or whatever you know. And then no one moved. And then, well, eventually someone did. But it was about four seats up. Uh, a girl sort of said, oh, "Do you want to sit here?" And I was like, "What?" Isn't it? Weird? I don't know. I kind of, I don't know. I just, I think, I don't know if it's just people. I was like, I suppose because my generation, or the generation before mine would have been judging my generation for not doing the things that they did. So it's probably the same thing. So my generation is now judging the younger generation because they're not, they haven't got the same 
morals or the same rules. Let's say rules, not morals. Rules, you know, like a lot of people, it's not just young people to be fair, but a lot of people don't know how to queue for a bus. Or they don't give their seat up for an elderly person on a bus or that kind of stuff is but then I never got taught that at school I suppose just that part of my brain worked I was fortunate but it's just I'm worried though I'm worried that you know one day I'm going to be on the bus and I have a, a lady smile at me and I smile back at her thinking, oh, I've pulled here. She, she, she looks like she likes me. What a wonderful day. And she stands up and gives a chair, gives a seat to me because I'm elderly and she's young. <laughs> she's it's like, oh, okay. And her hips work. And mine don't anymore. I feel so old. Oh, I woke up today. I couldn't believe it. I had a bath. Couldn't believe that either. I had a bath. And uh, it was quite a nice experience, actually. I mean, not, not like... I won't be writing a poem about it, but it was it was quite nice. And I got go out of bath, dried myself off, flossed me, flossed flossed in the gaps and flat not flat and a flub. and then I just I looked in the mirror. I realised as I was kind of wiping my face I realised that my nose was sore and a big spot on my nose it's gone now I just had to check I couldn't believe I had a pimple on my nose and I don't get spots very often here's my theory I bought these, I use face wipes um, that I use every night before I go to sleep and uh, first thing in the morning if I, before, if I don't have a bath first thing then I'll, I'll have a, I'll use these wipes for my face to try and, you know, keep my face in just perfect, you know, you know how, you know, perfect. And I got these new ones. Normally it's, I don't use a specific one, but it's like Evian facial wipe or whatever, you know, just to try and keep my face clean and perfect, you know, perfect. Anyway, I bought these new ones last week, I think it was, or the week before. Oh, my creaky chair. My creaky chair that I'm going to have forever and ever. <laughs> I, um... I bought this new pack of face wipes. Which were anti-aging. And I even, I'm sure they even said on there, like, you know, you feel younger, you look younger. So, okay... I'll have, a, I'll have a little go of that. I'll have a little taste of that. That sausage dog. Which doesn't make sense. And oh, I've got an itchy. Oh, okay, it's done. So far, I get these. They weren't expensive. And I like things that cost a pound. And I liked that long before the pound shops became popular. I mean, they're not really popular anymore, but they used to be really popular. 
the pound shops, pound land. There was a shop that opened actually when I first moved here in this town in nine, what, 2007. There was a shop, there was a pound land. In fact, there was two pound lands. And, um, Pound Land, the Pound Shop, I don't know. But there was another one, and it was called Around a Pound. <laughs> Around a Pound. So, like, roughly a pound, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. And I was like, brilliant. Never went in there, but I just loved the, the sign, Around a Pound. So, yeah, but out there was a pound shop. It might be in pound land, I don't know, but it closed down. I thought, oh well, my goodness, the high street is in trouble if the pound shops are closing down. What's next? The charity shops? What's next? Coffee shops? Oh. I don't go into town much these days. I used to. But then I used to live in town. And I, I find things much easier to get to if they're close. You know? When, so, when something's further away, it just seems to take longer to get to. I don't really know why, but it's something about distance. I've never been a fan of distance. I have had some long distance relationships. Yeah, I, I dated someone years ago, and. Uh, I lived in London, she lived in Suffolk, and then I moved to Ireland, and she still stayed in Suffolk, and then she got a new boyfriend, and in her defence she said, but you moved out of the country, and you said you were never coming back. I couldn't really argue with it. It's like, oh yeah. Didn't really think that one through. Oh. Oh yeah. Hmm. So. What other long distance relationships? Oh, here's a funny story. is absolutely I met this girl and I was probably 17 when I met her at a caravan site at the town that I lived I met her in the summer and I had a dance with her I don't think we kissed, but we danced. I mean, to me back then, that was practically marriage. You know, I, that you know, I didn't really, I wasn't always able to read the signs. I think I thought of it too much more of it than she did. But I used to phone her up, and we'd have a laugh, and she, I'd make her laugh and talk rubbish for an hour or something. And I remember going to the phone box. I was talking to her for a year. Yeah, a year. Not every day. And not a year constantly, like the whole year. But, you know, every now and then for a year. And would write to each other. 
and I'd send her letters saying that she was I don't know what I used to say I probably used to write poems because I used to be romantic when I was younger I've got no romance in me at all now but I used to used to, oh I was so romantic I really really believed in like romance and love and all that stuff but yeah, so I probably re I probably sent some really nice letters you know opening my heart and telling her how she's the most wonderful person in the world and can't wait to lose my virginity when she comes back for on holiday I probably didn't put that anyway she'd so in the meantime because we weren't together but we was um, it was more kind of let's see what happens when I come back next year so she was coming back on holiday the same time the following year so I held up a lot of uh, hope you know that something would happen that she because I really liked her and then I met someone else that summer it was I was 18 for the summer of 1988 and she had ginger hair not really relevant to the story but and yeah I liked her and we liked each other and stuff and but it was more of a childish relationship because uh I was very childish basically and she well anyway she um, what was it I was 18 she was 15 but just before her 16th birthday and nothing had happened or anything between us and then on her 16th birthday so we'd We'd kind of gone out and six or so. Yeah, she's. I thought she was six I'm, I don't care. It's but she wasn't. She was just before sixteen. But on her sixteenth birthday, she invited me round because she was babysitting, and she invited me round to um, probably have a nice evening together. because I was still a Virgo back then and uh, I kind of, you know but I didn't take the hint and because me and her it wasn't really I liked her but, you know nothing was really happening and it was, she was a bit young and but it, she was friends with my landladies daughter so I kind of she was just always around so I just got to know her and then this girl I think she lived in Stevenage or something she came down on holiday again so my decision on that night instead of spending it with my girlfriend well, she wasn't really my girlfriend but she she could have become my girlfriend um, instead of that I went to see the other girl who I'd kind of been longing for you know for a year and then I turned up couldn't find her anywhere it turned out she was hiding from me which was a bit weird because uh, we kind of did plan that I was we would meet up next time she came in her def defence she did say yeah but I, told, I said that to you six months ago things have changed I said okay it turned out 
right, that the whole time she was, that whole year, she had a boyfriend. And that boyfriend was in my town. Someone that she met while she was on holiday the previous year. And she went on to have kids with him. The things that women would do to avoid dating me is ridiculous. And then nothing happened with the, the other, I can't remember her name. Um, to be honest, I, I liked her friend better. <laughs> she was older as well. She was just funny. She was the landlord or landlady's daughter. And she was, she'd left school, so I don't know how they managed to be friends, but yeah, she'd left school and she was this bundle of energy. So I think she probably was about 16. By the way, those listening in America, 18 is legal in it. I know you've got to be 18 to do um, Rumpy Pumpy in America, but in England it's 16. So it's... Uh, so there. Just like drinking alcohol, we can drink alcohol here at 18. Yours is 21. But then you get to have guns, so we don't. So, you know, it kind of all evens itself out in the end. 16... That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I am... Um, to be fair, I wasn't... I was... I didn't lose my cherry until I was 19. So, there you go. 19... It was... What was it? The year was... 2000. So I wasn't just 19, I was nearly 20, which is embarrassing. It was the summer of 2020, no, 1990 rather. Summer of 1990 with Michelle, my name was. And I even remember her surname, but I won't say it. But Michelle... And she was beautiful. And even then it was weird because I, I was so nervous. So nervous of doing the deed. That I kind of said to her. Because she was older than me. She was, I think she was about 25. And had about 17 children. So she was a, a little bit more experienced than I was. And uh, I think she was a coke mule, coke mule as well. I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, she was. I liked her. She was nice. And we <laughs> and I wrote. She wrote me a letter because so we discussed, you know, my situation. She wrote me a letter saying. You know, I'd really like to take your um, your star sign away from you, but I, you know, I don't want to hurt you because I'm not sure if I can give you what you need. And I said, I don't need anything. Just, you know, I'm moving to London next year to do comedy. I'm not sticking around here. And at one point she did want to move in with me. She wanted to get a flat together. And I said, no. I said, no, I'm moving away. And I did love her, but I knew... I did, I really did love her. She was absolutely uh, amazing. But the fact is... I don't... You know, I wasn't the only person in her life... And, and her kids were in America or something so I don't know what that was about 
but she was, I really liked her, and yeah, so she's, she was my first, and I was absolutely terrible. It was, I'm just, I mean, imagine now, imagine, because I was really slim back then, and it was almost like trying to do yoga on a waterbed, it was, it was, it was, it was just weird, the whole, I really did not know what I was doing, and... I'm not. I'm not saying that she was like a waterbed, but it, it kind of felt a little bit like I was just um, trying to do something I didn't know how to do, and it it's almost like feeding someone dog food, you know. Fun for the person feeding, but not much fun for the person eating, you know? I kind of felt like that was possibly what was going on there. So I, I did feel sorry for her, because I really didn't know what I was doing. I still don't, but I don't care now. Back then I, I used to care. I used to kind of... I said I was romantic, and I wanted to... I used to think it was important to please your partner. Now I know it's not, but I used to. <laughs> I used to think. <laughs> I used to think it was. I did. I used to thought. Used to think. You know, emotions were involved, but it'd be this. You know, I've learned as I got older. You know, I've educated in that. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. I need to eat something. But at the same time, I can't be bothered. You know that feeling when you're just like, oh, oh, I could have a pizza. I do have a pizza that I could put in the oven. It only takes, what, 20 minutes. I've got so lazy with the microwave lately really just stiff sticking something in for 12 minutes you know, like a cooked meal and it's done it's like mm -hmm. it's easy easy so I kind of the idea of heating up the oven and then waiting for it to be cooked <sighs> Really? Yes, yeah, that's so last week. Ah, oh, can't be bothered. I think my whole life would have been different though if I'd have not gone to look for that girl at the caravan site. I say, look, I thought I was meeting her. I wasn't, you know, wasn't sort of chasing her around. Although it did seem a bit like that at some time. A bit like a Benny Hill sketch. Or some kind of comedy sketch. You know, I'd, honestly, I was I was looking through people's caravans, looking for her. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that, but... I was only young. I was only a youngster. I was only 39. And... I reckon if I'd have stayed with, if I'd have kind of had a relationship with the other girl who was a legal age at that point, I'd probably have kids. I suppose technically in America I would be having a kid, wouldn't it? But but you know I mean like having children giving birth and stuff so and I just I could have spent the last 30 years of my life 
raising loads of children because I think that's probably what she wanted there's nothing wrong with it but I don't I don't don't not sure if I see myself in that capacity no I don't no it was weird though because I got on really well with her family because I used to go around and I got on well with her mum and her brothers brothers were funny and her older brothers and I think there was a couple that were sort of a bit younger than me one was older so they all they all called me and I stayed over but I'd sleep in the living room and she'd sleep in her bedroom and there'd be no naughty business because she wasn't old enough yet so we had to it was literally I met her I think probably three weeks before her 16th birthday something like that I've got to keep stop mentioning it haven't I but God, I was so immature I still am really I suppose I don't mind now though because I don't care anymore so that's a good thing you know it's like it doesn't matter I don't want nothing from anyone I'm not going to give anything to anyone <laughs> I'm very neutral I'm just in my little home with my little ferret eating pizza I love that lady on the bus it's quite nice a nice face But I had my headphones on And I felt so relaxed Really kind of dimmed out the background sound It was nice So I haven't got to worry about dimming out the voices in my head or anything like that Because It doesn't do that anyway If there's I don't mean voices, voices But Thoughts are going to arise anyway. But being on a bus is a bit of a... Well, being out in public is a bit of a distraction. My stomach's rumbling now. Feed me. Feed me. I was thinking about how many ginger gingers that I've ginger girls ladies that I've not frequented um, had friendships with or a kind of romantic encounters kind of so I'm just trying to think so there was there was a girl at school that had ginger hair. I'll include the ones that I liked as well as the ones that I actually got with or uh, kissed or held hands or whatever. So there was a girl at school. There was a girl called Wendy who worked at a chip shop who I really liked and she had ginger hair and I really I pretty much was in love with her like proper proper in love with her and um, she ended up going out with someone like 15 years old so you know she it was but I think part of that was his his mum 
his mum, the, the, the kid that was dating her, his mum was dating someone half her age. So I think he's kind of was influenced a bit by that and had the confidence to ask out a fully grown woman. And yeah, I don't know, he might have been just under 16 or whatever, but he was, she couldn't have been, she must, I'm sure she was younger than me. And I was there when I was 15 to 17. By Allah, I loved her. Wendy. So who else was there? So nothing happened there. I did go on a date with her once. Um, at a cinema. I st and she agreed eventually to come to the cinema with me. And I saw her coming and I hid. And then when I stopped hiding and looked for her, she was disappeared. So I kind of missed that up a little bit. So I ended up going in and watching Crocodile Dundee in a cinema on my own. Nope. That's what I did. Oh. So it's a good film, but I still... Uh, Anyway, so that was that. So who else was there? Her. So her, Wendy. The one from, yeah, the one when I was 18. And then... Anything nineteen, nineteen, twenty. When I was twenty, I kind of had a thing with another ginger girl. When I was twenty, she was lovely. From South London, and what other ones? Two thousand and five, I dated a girl with ginger hair. So that's five. probably dated a few that I forget about but uh, so that's five there was a ginger do, 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 do. Uh, oh yeah I got married to a ginger ginger woman for 15 years, forgot about that. Nah, only kidding. I I dated someone that had kind of ginger hair. It was more kind of mousy, but it was gingery. Um, in 2001, I think that was, or 2000. In 2001. I met someone that I really, really liked, and she had ginger hair. But I didn't ever get to date her, but I did become friends with her. And... Yeah, she kind of... Very similar to the girl from South London. Who I've met... What, ten years earlier. It's very similar. So that, that was her, but I didn't ever, nothing really happened there. 
sure there was others. What others? Um, yeah, I dated a ginger ginger hair girl. In, well, I didn't realise she was ginger, and because she had she used to dye her hair, but she was ginger, and she. I dated her in 2005, I think. And I'm just trying to think back. There's a few. I got a hug. <laughs> it's it's you know, a hug, a cuddle with a ginger girl. Or lady at this uh, charity do thing and I met her a few times I really liked her and I just didn't pursue I didn't kind of uh, ask her out or anything but we had a hug and it lasted for quite a long time but anyway so that so that's nine since then no I don't think there's been any others when I was a DJ I probably kissed a few uh, I kissed lots of people or they kissed me anything to get me to play the song they wanted they were just using me like a piece of meat and I felt so used and oh, I don't remember any others so I like ginger girls something I like any colour hair or skin I don't, really don't care I just I think women are great. Not all of them, obviously, because not all of anything's great, is it? But I do. I do like ladies. Met a lot of really nice ones. Met a few really horrible ones as well. Like really, like personality-wise, that was what was weird. Because when I was a DJ, and I was literally. It was like being being at a buffet, you know. Just it it was. I don't know the right word, but it was um, there was no effort on my part. Um, I was in my prime, I guess. I don't know, and I got a lot of attention for whatever reason, mainly because I was in control of the music, I guess, and. Yeah. Most of my the dating that I did happened during those four years when I was a DJ. That was when I was really sort of. It's the only time I've ever really had a social life. Really, I had a bit of a social life, I guess, when I was at Butlins. But that was with work colleagues. And that was like work hard, play hard kind of atmosphere. And it's the only time in my life that I've drunk heavily. I used to drink, you know, when I was at Butlins, I was drinking a lot. A lot of alcohol. But then I was eating a lot. So I was absorbing you know I was having three cooked meals a day which was the first time in my life that I'd ever had that you know most of my adult life I'd have a sandwich for lunch and a maybe a cooked meal in the evening but to have a cooked breakfast cooked lunch and a cooked dinner and evening you know snacks as well never had that before in my life 
so I put weight on plus I was drinking every night and having fun I haven't dated many blonde ladies I seem to I seem to what girlfriends have I had I can't even remember the last time I had a girlfriend oh yeah it was about a month ago but that, that didn't last long but before that um years ago brunette before that brunette before that kind of yeah brunette I suppose well grey hairs covered other <laughs> by brunette um, before that yeah the, the one I had before before I moved, did the university course she was kind of blonde ish probably kind of more red ready hair you know that kind of um, I think I can't remember I can't remember what she looks like and the one before her was Oh yeah, it was what's her name, yeah. She had blonde hair. And then the one before her had red hair. The one before her had blonde hair. And the one before her had Blonde hair. Oh, so there's been a few blondes. Never usually that bothered by hair. Never dated a baldy. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. But even that wouldn't really bother me, to be fair. I don't care about stuff like that. If anything, it'd be quite a novelty. You know, it'd be like dating someone nine foot tall. It's like, oh, cool. Especially they've got massive, massive breasts and I can hide under there when it's raining. Yeah, that's why I want them to be massive. <laughs> so I could use them as umbrellas. Ella, Ella. Ella, Ella. Eww. Andre's sister had ginger hair. Like the original Andre. You know, Andre's namesake. His sister had ginger hair. And my friend Kevin used to, was together with his sister. And he had curly hair. You know, like, you know, naturally curly. He had that, like, naturally curly hair, which you don't really, don't see very often. It's very, um, very curly. But then my hair's very curly if I let it grow, which I'm going to. I'm going to let it grow long. I've now decided if our Prime Minister can have messy hair, so can I. Although I'm hoping that our Prime Minister in two days' time will be a 72-year-old with glasses. That's what I'm hoping. But hey, what can you do? What can you do with a drunken sailor? What can you do with a drunken sailor? Ooh, 
So yeah, that's kind of it really. So that's my gingers done. Tomorrow I'll talk about uh, feet. <laughs> talk about feet. There is something exotic about ginger girls. Because I know it's like some people talk about gingers like in a a derogatory way kind of old I don't feel that way I think ginger hair is beautiful um, yeah not always obviously I mean simply red is a is an example you know it's Holding back the years ooh, ooh. Yeah, I mean, I do, yeah I've got ginger in my family though Because Two of my cousins have got ginger kids I think three of my cousins have got ginger kids actually And my my grandmother's brother was ginger not when I met him, he was grey. Because he was about 95. I mean, honestly, half of his body had already turned to dust. He was quite old. But he... He used to be ginger. And... I think one of my... Her sisters was also... Gingery. So I've got ginger in my genes, <laughs> which means I mean, I'm never going to have a kid now. I don't know. I can't imagine it works anymore. I don't know. It's, but I could have a ginger child. I could have, give, I could give birth to a ginger. And how cool would that be? also be an instant billionaire if I gave birth wouldn't I I saw men say oh I want to give want to give birth I would instant billionaire I'd be so rich overnight there's not one magazine or newspaper that wouldn't want to interview me and take pictures oh all those pictures of my redness holding my little ginger baby yeah anyway that's it so that's the I fancy a gingerbread man I might get one tomorrow to treat myself so I waited two weeks to get paid and I've literally just been I've had food and stuff in Andre's making some weird noises I've had food and everything I just I haven't had many treats quite like a little treat tomorrow so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to give myself a little treat Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'll find something. Yeah, I'll find something. Maybe a gingerbread man. Maybe a gingerbread man and a hooker. <laughs> no, just a gingerbread man. TJ Hooker. It was one of my favourite programmes years ago. TJ Hooker and... And the fall guy. I am the unknown stuntman. 
that makes Eastwood look so fine. I wonder if he really did have a fake eye. If he always had that, didn't he? That like he'd be looking through one eye, even when he was a stuntman. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I think my time slot has been filled. And I'm gonna get some food for myself. So, thank you very much for listening. Take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And try not to take anything that I ever say too seriously because I'm just babbling on about nothing. So, take care of yourselves. Lots of love. Bye.